Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back with another tutorial today showing you guys a little more advanced effects on uh, VSDC here so you guys can get a little more in-depth look at what I do with my montages and how you can make them better yourself. So, um, I'm going to start off here by looking at my lotto montage that I made a couple days ago. Alright, so uh, starting on this first clip here, we're, I'm going to show you guys what I do as far as the overlay text there where you can see through. So this one is actually pretty straightforward. Um, it is a little difficult because it's not great lighting behind. So that is why I have the double text here. And I actually use this one with a blur in the background kind of as a sh shadow backdrop. And it is off just a touch from the original text here. So see how it moves there up in the corner. But basically all you got to do with this here is you can go over to the side under where it says the composition mode. And you can choose all of these different options. And these will all be available to you on the free version as well. So you don't have to worry about that. And um, the ones that I'm using here is overlay. But like for example, if I were to change it to like invert color, you can see how that would change that way. But normally it has you on blend and that's where you get the white text, just the straight up where if you change it up here, it would be different or whatnot, you know, but that is why I have the overlay here so that way you can just get a kind of brightened up see-through effect and you can do that with other ones of these here as well like the screen is another one I use a lot of the time doesn't work as great in this scenario um, contrast you know it's kind of just a play around and see what you like with that one there but that is one of the more simple ones that I figured I would show you guys right away all right, so going on to the next bit here, I have a pretty complicated one in this cinematic. Um, so what I did with this is I had a billboard in the background with like a 3D text almost type, where as I zoomed in, the text went along with it. And now because normally when I'm on the uh, pro version, I have motion tracking to go with this, which isn't available on the free version. But this is actually a good example to show you guys because I wasn't able to use the motion tracking on this. It didn't want to work with this just sort of cinematic. So what I actually did is I had this text this whole way along here. All right, so once we're back to this point, you can see I zoomed in with the text being adjacent with it the whole entire time. And in the background of the text I actually had a video in there, which is what's causing this to be as laggy as it is. But that is two parts of this that I'll show you. This bottom text here is basically just used as a shadow to make it look like it's 3D. So that I don't really need to go in depth on. It's just the blur on top of the motion. But this top text here I will show you is actually a cinematic that I used that I had the source in uh, composition mode on. Um, because if I weren't to have that on there, it would just be a still frame image over that area the whole entire time. And I actually had this zoomed in to fit the frame as well. But with that back in there, the reason I show you this is because this is the um, the movement I use for this as well. So up in your video effects here and you have your transforms you have all these different options here that can uh, basically the picture shows like what it does so here with the shift and the zoom what I did is I gradually just moved the levels along the side to fit the picture at the time as you can see there and then what I did with the zoom as well is it because it just gradually got closer to the screen I kept increasing the level 100 is the uh, normal frame that fits the whole entire picture so by the end it was getting over 100 to these larger numbers and I had to play around with this quite a bit but and then 
also just a little bit of uh, rotating and perspective to do which perspective is um, used here because the video gets more straight up and down so that means that I have to change the angle of the text so it fits better and you can see it's not perfectly done because it's not motion tracked but it's about as accurate as I could get within a reasonable time span you know so there you go guys there's a little look into that part I know that's a lot to take in but you can kinda get a better understanding as well as that um with text you can be pretty pretty lenient with as long as you just put in the text you know type something up in there and then you can just play around and because this is blend it goes right over the top of that so you know, there you have that all right so this bit here for you guys is another kind of example of what you can do with putting video in text or just in the video itself on top of that so for this one I had a transition right before a kill where it was kind of just a lock on type of cinematic so what I did here for the transition is while I was doing an overlay that I found I added this effect so I will move this over so you guys can see what the effect would look like here originally so originally it was one of those eyeball type overlays where you could put in here and then I did that on top mixed with some motion tracking and I used that so that way you could get that pop effect there in between one of the transitions so once again you get to see a little bit more of what I'm working with here. I know I'm not doing a great job explaining, but this is kind of just an in-depth in look at uh, how I do some of my cinematics here on top of the already pre-recorded footage. And then just a little fade out there right into the clip. All right, guys, so for the next part, I'm gonna swap over to uh, my newest montage, actually, to give you guys a little better example here of um, how I speed up and slow down the clips so that way it's synced a lot better with your songs um, so yeah for the example here off the start I have where the right before the beat drop you have the three little increases in bass right before it goes and I'll play that through here so you can tell right there where it's those three areas that there's emphasis on. So what I did with that is with my clips here, this is all one video that I had originally, but what I do is I split it into fragments. So, and then what I do with those fragments is I speed them up or either slow them down. So that way it's adjusted to the pace of the song. Um, so normally what you would do is you would put a video in, uh, let's just, toss one in like this alright so going over here to look at the sink you can use this bar over here to zoom into the area to see what you want what I do is I cut using this fragment right here and I'll automatically split the video in half I'm not gonna do that because it's already done but you can see down here what the speed percent of the video is. So a normal video is going to be automatically at 100%. And um, But these parts are not just because it's going to fit with the song. So you can see here that's sped up quite a bit compared to the rest. I have that at 275% speed. Well, this is down to almost half speed. 
just to fit with the song and then once it hits the cut fragment part here it'll speed up again and then I'll slow down and speed up again at the fragment and then right before the kill a really slow bit and then back to 100% speed on the kill so leading up to it you can see all the different changes in speed here but normally here's the part that you guys might want to know the most as far as if you're going to be speeding up and slowing down your videos watch the audio because the audio that goes with it is typically under this drop down here and it has it under tempo so what this does is it keeps the same audio as if it were at a hundred percent but it chunks it down into the amount of frames that are there so it'll be really choppy and really cut so what you want to do is you want to stretch the sound using the rate change by doing this it's gonna make your video go with whatever the speed is so it'll be probably a lot like deeper sounding if it's slowed down or a lot higher pitch if it's sped up but what I do a lot of the times with um, the speeding up and slowing down for my bits is I'll reduce the audio volume here about 15 decibels or so. So normally your clips are set at zero. Anything below negative 30 is complete silence. So it's a good halfway in between point there for me. So the, the build up to it gets a little more tense as well. And then what I use here is a whoosh sound effect. And that goes along with the kill very nicely. So that way it gives it added effect. And right at the peak of the, the whoosh is when you want your shotgun blast or your kill to happen. And when I do that, you can see my character just complete different frames here and do like an explosive effect basically. So yeah, I'll play this through. It's gonna be really laggy because it's not exported, but you guys can kind of see a gist of how I do the speed up and slow down. All right, all right. So the last thing I wanted to show you guys on um, this bit here is how I do the effects for one of like the most important kills which is usually the first base drop here so I have this probably significantly more edited than um, some of the parts in the middle here so a lot of the times I'm still using the same uh, lead up to it which is a grayscale effect which tones down the color to a gray and then the blur which also obviously blurs the screen so I use these values over here which can be very much manipulated you know based on how much you want like, clearly it's just up to preference on the editing style usually I try to keep it not too out of hand but I would say my edits are a little more over the top than most people so once I get to this bit here on the bass drop I usually do that especially in like creative or arena when the person changes the color blue because it's a significant change in pop in there. Um, this part here you guys won't be able to do, which is like the swaying back and forth of the rotate because I do use an advanced feature where I have the angle of the uh, rotate like that. However, with the zoom, you guys could still do it in a different manner here where you would have it be the level go from say this to like 100 I will just get rid of this here to show you guys for example so what you could do with that is it'll just Give a pop with the character and zoom out. For the effects here, I have the brightness as well, the background ones that go a lot longer so that way it maintains steady, just a little bit background brightness. And then this one here is the color changing that I have. 
So this one again, you won't be able to do this when I swap through. This option and this option here is not available to you guys, but you will be able to at least slant it so you can um, do it linearly. Um, what you do here is, I'll show it in that manner, is these color changes go from anywhere from a scale of 0 to 360. Uh, 0 being the starting point, 360 being the end, which is also basically equivalent to 0. So you can tell at 180 it's obviously the most inverted. So like what I like to do is just change it up a little bit so it's just a little off and you can see here it's like a tealish blue color more so than if it were at 0. And that's kind of just one of those little effects that I toss in there to give it somewhat more of a pop as well. And then once again the transition that I showed you guys on the last how to edit video. And then, I mean, I do that for most of my clips where it's something similar to that aspect. Maybe not, like on this one, I don't have the color pop just because that way I can show you guys like, wow, I hit a 200 pump or something, you know? But it's a lot of the time the same basic effects just with a lot of zoom or maybe the rotate effect there. And then once again, after a kill, try to just get some cinematics because I was on break uh, I wasn't really able to get any cinematics related to the clip but you always want to try to use ones that are similar to the character as well so yep just going through here looking and it's kind of a lot of the same ones but you guys can kind of understand like a gist of what I'm showing you here as far as how I do that so like say with a normal kill too a lot of the times what I have is just a single brightness there so once you play that through, then just fades out. You know, those little tiny effects like that go a long way over the whole clip. Like this one, just that little pop gives a lot more flair to your video than if you were to leave it a blank clip. So let's say we go into like this one. I guarantee you this one is just about the same as the beginning where it's going to be that except the values are changed slightly so it's a brighter pop. So there you guys go. You can kind of just get an understanding of what I do more with some of the advanced effects there. Um, if you guys want to see more of these in the future or request like any type of effect that you want me to show you, I mean, be more than willing to have you guys ask and I'll just show you whatever you need so yeah thanks for watching really appreciate it the channel's been growing a lot lately and I appreciate that so much guys um, you've all been incredibly supportive recently so I can't thank you all enough uh, yeah so that's about what I got for you thank you guys and have a good one